I've been one fortunate bird. <laughs> uh, my parents uh, came to this country for freedom and uh, they got it and then they had kids and uh, they were lucky to be born here. Lido Anthony Iacocca, born in Allentown, Pennsylvania, October 15, 1924. Educated as an engineer at Lehigh in Princeton, childhood disease prevented his serving in World War II. He joined Ford in 1946 and quickly discovered sales and marketing his forte. A fast rise through the ranks to Ford Division General Manager brought him to his first historic automotive hit in April 1964, the legendary Mustang. Walt Disney flanking me and we're cutting the ribbon at the World's Fair. That was our showroom, PR guy's dream. By 1970, he'd made president, but his high-octane personality didn't mesh with the guy whose name was on the building, Henry Ford II. The deuce, as Ford was known, one day shipped Iacocca's desk to a distant corner of the glass house and days later fired Lee. A desperately ailing Chrysler Corporation pounced on the opportunity and brought Iacocca in as CEO in 1979. And that's when the cash went to zero one day. I mean, one million we had. We laughed about it, but it was a million which meant nothing. It was laugh or cry. I thought there'd be some way we could avoid liquidating this venerable 60-year-old you know, household word called Chrysler. At the height of a recession and nowhere else to turn, he asked for government help. Iacocca successfully wooed a very reluctant Washington and in 1980 received one and a half billion dollars in loan guarantees. I got nervous and I, I worried, but no, in my, my inner feelings, in my heart, I never felt that it would blow sky high. He had a couple of aces up his sleeve though. While at Ford, he and his design team had a new front wheel drive car that Ford wouldn't build. At Chrysler, it became the K car. Starting with the K car ads, Iacocca became a fabulously successful pitchman, doing 61 Chrysler commercials. Another Iacocca Ace Ford didn't like was the minivan, also an instant hit at Chrysler. The cash started flowing again. Chrysler paid back its bailout seven years ahead of schedule. On the strength of the minivan alone, Iacocca started building the Chrysler Tech Center. The cash cow here for 20 years, it built this place. By the way, this was 1.5 billion when we didn't have it. Iacocca took a lot of heat in the nine years it took to build the original Palace of Auburn Hills. The press was mean and dirty. He said he's building a white elephant, a monument to himself. He told Local 4 when he retired in 1992, that battle was his toughest and his crowning achievement. The guts to stick that out when everybody was beating me over the head to not do it. Yeah. In 1995, his local popularity took a hit when he joined Las Vegas billionaire Kirk Kerkorian to try and buy Chrysler in a hostile takeover. After Chrysler merged with Mercedes, he came back. For shizzle, I could shizzle. In the most unlikely pairing in advertising history, he cut commercials with rapper Snoop Dogg. I said, who the hell is he? And my 14-year-old granddaughter told me who he was. So, wow, he's a cool guy. He wrote two best-selling books. At one point, his friends talked him out of running for president. He gave much of his fortune to find a cure for diabetes. His first wife, Mary, died of the disease. He dabbled in olive oil-based foods and always said he flunked retirement. It's been a hell of a ride, you know. Nice ride. Thank you, Mocha Coca.